everybody, we're back. I'm Rochelle, the captain, president of Connecting Cultures. I'm Erin Rosales, vice president, and uh, we just wanted to sit down today and talk a little bit uh, about some topics of interest to us, and we believe also of interest to a lot of other folks based on what we've uh, been seeing as far as conversations on social media and other platforms uh, where interpreters like to hang out. So um, the topic that we kind of want to address is um, the challenge of what we're seeing uh, around the country in the United States uh, with regard to language services and in the hospitals and different uh, healthcare organizations and systems. So uh, if you spend any time on any of the social media groups, I'm sure uh, you have heard about some of our colleagues who have been in really difficult situations where um, they've been working in a department in a hospital that has its own language services department and uh, it's been around for maybe years or even decades in some cases and what seems to be almost from from night to day uh, it, the department is just gone uh, the positions are cut there's drastic uh, changes that are made with regard to how the organization is delivering language services and that causes a lot of um, stress, angst, uh, turmoil, um, and uh, without question a lot of um, uh, hurt feelings uh, um, among one thing, but uh, also leaves us all wondering what the heck, <laughs> what's going on and, and um, uh, what are the things that we need to pay attention to and be aware of in the healthcare system and organizations. So, um, with that um, kind of lead in and that context setting the stage for this conversation, uh, we'd like to share some thoughts that we have that hopefully will be helpful for you with regard to uh, where is it that language services fits into the healthcare service, um, the healthcare service uh, system as an organization as a whole picture. Right. And I think what's happening now is healthcare is changing drastically. Um, what used to be local clinics and kind of local regional organizations really have to expand. And so as that happens, there's new leadership that comes in, everything's looking to get more and more lean, um, especially kind of in smaller markets, I would say that it's, it might be happening a little bit more now as they start to get bigger. Um, but the, the most unfortunate part of all of this is that you have really well experienced, passionate people who have been able to have a career as a healthcare interpreter and really add that value and then that goes away and it really hurts our profession. But as you have heard me talk about a lot is that business argument. And so you tend, sometimes you have managers that come in and they're there, they're passionate, they're helping, but when it comes time to really look at those budgetary numbers, um, and, and be on those committees and, and talk about things, there's a lack of being able to build that business argument. Um, and so when you're looking at budgets and where you're gonna cut, um, what services are or aren't uh, necessary services, um, and it, you know the cost of having employees and benefits and just the, there's a, there's a different side of expense to having staff versus having vendors. Um, and so we're, we're seeing that I think people aren't able to build that business argument when you're sitting down with the you know, chief financial officer or even your next uh, level uh, superior to say, hey, this is why we add value. Um, it's nice to see that healthcare is, it, they're not eliminating language services. It's not that they're trying to um, stop the, the care and, and the service, it's just that they're seeing that, okay, if you send it outside of the organization, it just makes more business sense. And so um, one of the things that I think is lacking sometimes is looking at that job description and, and really setting up what the value is and, and having that role. Um, I know that I've worked with a couple of people throughout the country where, you know, trying to go to human resources and, and, and getting raises and moving within the organization and having next tiers after you have so many years within, you don't want to stay the same. Um, but without being able to build that business argument, your budget doesn't grow. And then um, you're not able to keep staff because they they need to move on. Expenses grow, um, things happen, and so uh, being able to to kind of structure those things is really important. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, one of the um, things that, yes, Rochelle, as you're talking about, the it's not that healthcare is saying, okay, we're not going to offer language services at all. Right. Uh, but it is uh, very impactful when a department gets cut and mm -hmm. language services is then the model of delivery is changed. And so, um, you know, we hear about the, the race to the bottom and like what's the, yeah. the least amount of money we can pay to get the service to just cover it close enough. Right. And so, um, it, you know, if we think about even in, in budgets in our personal lives, right, it's like I want to pay the least amount of money but, you know, get value for what I'm doing. So sometimes I'm going to pay more for something because it's worth Mm -hmm. uh, investing a little bit more money to get a higher quality or a better outcome. And so we think about that in our own personal uh, financial situations and household budgets and, and, and whatnot. But um, so the, the missing piece that seems to be, be uh, one of the missing pieces that seems to be present in how do we show the value of language services to the, the C-suite, to the decision makers, to the budget owners, in that, um, yeah, there, um, there's. We definitely have to take care of the budget, but the cheapest option isn't necessarily right. the best option. In fact, the cheapest option. What's the saying? You get what you pay for. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes you end up, you know, uh, if you're if you're going for the least expensive, just looking at the dollar signs, you end up without realizing it, paying more. It's more expensive. Right. So, um, you know, I, I. Uh, I uh, be hard pressed to imagine a healthcare system that says, let's always find the cheapest sharps instruments or let's find the cheapest what have you without having any consideration for quality or outcome. Right. Um, even in hiring, uh, you know, talent pool and whether it's, uh, you know, physicians or nurses or, or the other professional staff members as well. So um, the kind of getting to maybe a, a, a bit of a, a point to take away here is, what are we doing to show in a very real and, and tangible way that language services um, and, and the whole picture is not um, a nice to have thing, right. it's a necessary thing uh, for healthcare and it does make not only a, a better patient care experience, but it makes much more financial sense for the organization as well. Well, and we've seen over our now 19 years um, kind of ebbs and flows where organizations have been, you know, dealing with the face-to-face -face interpreting and, and things have been easy and then it's like, nope, we're cutting, we're, we're saving money, we're doing things differently. And what we've seen over time is that you know, as as time passes, providers cycle through, um, employees cycle through in general, and so the process that was doesn't exist anymore because it doesn't pass through, and then you end up back to the same place of, you know, well, it, it's it's just easier to use the family member. It's just easier to try and make it through. It's just easier to, um, you know, try and use my Spanish. All of the things that, as healthcare interpreters, we know is not providing the service, but it is saving money. And as long as it's good enough, we have Google Translate and you know all of the different different methodologies to communicate. And so, kind of getting back to this original picture too, when you have an internal department and you have staff that know your providers and they know your patients and they know your rhythms and they know your system, there's a true value to that there's efficiencies there's you know there's not so many urgent care visits there are not so many er visits um, there's better adherence to treatment plans so we've also talked about you know one modality isn't necessarily the answer for everything so there is there is space and places to have video to have telephonic but outsourcing or not even outsourcing that's what i'm trying to say but you know, when you have a group of people that are so familiar with everything within your organization and you take that out, it really just kind of uh, breaks up all of the systems, all of the efficiencies. And we know healthcare is all about that, as is any business, because you have to do as much with as little. You have shareholders, um, owners, you have patients who want lower prices, you have insurance companies, there's a lot of different dynamics and really it comes down to the numbers. So um, as interpreters that's not really our first space to be in. It's not really, we don't get into the profession to be millionaires. We get into the pr profession because we're learning, we're helping, um, we're aiding, we're, we're adding kind of that warm and fuzzy value 
to the situation, but you really have to think about the money value that you're adding because you really are as interpreters, you add financial value to an organization. And until there's really a push and an understanding as a profession about that, and there's really looking at the dollars and cents, we would all, and I've said this before, if I won $400 million, I would do it for free and everybody would get paid a lot of money. But that's not reality. And so everybody wants to get paid, everybody wants their minimums, everybody wants to be called, everybody fights, you know, not fights, but, uh, yeah, fights a little bit to get their business and to have their hours and to have their paychecks. If you're not, you want your money but you have to show why, how you're making money for the people that are paying the bills. And we've, you know, in previous conversations too, it's been, well, who do you work for? Is it the provider or is it the patient? But really in the end, it's both, even if you didn't agree with the provider side, it really is both. And if you're not understanding the business side and seeing the provider side, you're not gonna be able to help the patient. You're not going to be around and have the resources and the time and the finances to go and provide that service because it's going to go somewhere else. So having really looking at our business, our profession as a business, it has to be the next level of conversation that we have. It has to be, you know, we've we've gotten we've gotten really far with with standardizing our our code of ethics and our business our business practices it's not even business practices really it's like operational procedural practices in the room we haven't expanded anything from the time you get called the time you interview the time you're approved to when you receive your your money there's nothing other than in the room mm -hmm. and that doesn't help us with our profession, we're, you know, as people, you know, get older, and, you know, I look at myself and I'm like, well, you know, not a young cookie anymore. <laughs> um, young puppy, I always mess up those idioms or whatever. But anyways, um, we, if we're trying to bring in a new generation and new leaders, it can't just be about what that piece is. It really has to start expanding um, beyond that because that's what makes the world run and all of that work to make the encounter in the exam room and in you know that patient experience good will be for naught we just because won't be we won't be around to do it and we again modalities all have their place in their time but when we're looking at people who have made this their career and who have worked as interpreters for decades just leaving the market completely because the jobs are gone and they need to support their families, that's a true, true travesty mm -hmm. in our industry. So we really got to start looking at that. But one of the other pieces to that as well is the training. So your professional development as an interpreter is really important as well because you, 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 know, you go through your 40 hour and you do your certification and you do the steps to start into the industry but then if you look at all of the other healthcare professionals, they have continuing education requirements. They have uh, need to continue to grow and evolve and, and improve their skills because more is known and more is learned. Um, but as interpreters, that's still a no man's land too, is okay, yep, I'm good here, but what do you do to continue that? Yeah, a lot is left up to the, the individual professional as far as the interpreter and what they are pursuing or not as far as their growth within their, uh, their own experience as a profession. So when there's these disconnects between um, you know, what's happening in the clinic exam room and what decisions are being made in the C-suite executive and what the professionals who are coming into these organizations, whether they're staff or contract interpreters or what have you, it's just all segmented and mm -hmm. siloed. And so um, that's, you know, that next level that we need to get to right. if we're hoping to survive because, you know, in reflecting on what you just said, there has been a great deal of work done. A lot of work yeah, yeah. needs to be done uh, still, but from, um, you know, how do you manage the flow and the process of a clinic encounter, um, that is supported because of all the other things that happen for people who never have any interaction or touch point with a patient, therefore also not with an interpreter. Yeah. So we really need to connect with um, those individuals, those roles within the profession. Mm -hmm. um, 
is in order for healthcare interpreting to, as you say, go then to the next level. Right. And I and I th I really think you know again it's the dollars and cents um, that are are it just comes down to that even as a as a professional and and looking for development and professional opportunities and you you know you're looking at conferences you're looking at classes you're looking at experiences if you're not making money and you're not getting paid how do you how do you balance out in your mind okay I'm going to invest x more dollars mm -hmm. in these skills because there there isn't the work and so it, I think healthcare does a disadvantage to the profession and to themselves, really, um, when they don't support and, and understand the full scope and there is that disconnect. Um, to close that gap, if you know uh, C-suite executives or, or any managers who haven't had that experience, encourage them to shadow. Encourage them to go along with an interpreter for an appointment or two. Um, that's really important because then you can actually see what's happening. You can manage it. Um, the buyer never is an interpreter. It just never is. There's so many departments and areas. So if you want to be able to continue on, healthcare wants to continue to have a value-added service mm -hmm. and something that can be can provide tangible value. Um, we really got to start digging in and having that having that business conversation because while again it's not the first thing we think about when we come into into the profession um, and usually it's the last it should be the first because if we want us to sustain the work that we do and continue doing what we love uh, got to talk about it yeah so we all know we add value we just have to figure out that piece as to how do we make it uh, real and tangible in particular for the people who are sometimes the most remote and removed from that interpreter interpreter encounter and who have all the decision making um, uh, influence and, and power um, in that scenario but it can be done yes <laughs> yeah so um, we're hoping that we can keep adding um, sharing information and thoughts and ideas and hopefully you know in our time we'll see healthcare really embracing um, interpreters and really really allowing healthcare interpreting to truly be a profession so yeah. well thanks for checking out this uh, video uh, feel free to add your comments in the comment section below and uh, continue uh, following us on social media yeah, make sure to subscribe and thank you thanks all for watching